Hello everyone, welcome to Iron Chemistry, lesson 1. My name is Joseph Katenta. Let's introduce by asking ourselves what an iron is. It is an atom or a group of atoms with an electric charge. And examples are the sodium ion, magnesium ion, chloride ion, sulfate ion, ammonium ion, and many others. Remember, when an ion is positively charged, it is called a cation. But when it is negatively charged, it is called an anion. For example, chloride ion, sulfate ion, hydroxide ion, sulfide ion, those are anions. How are ions formed? A simple cation is formed when an atom loses an electron or electrons. For example, consider a sodium atom whose electron configuration is 2 to 8 to 1. For it to become stable, it has to lose one electron. But when it does that, it becomes a sodium ion, as shown in that equation. But to form a simple anion, we have to have an atom that loses an electron or losing electrons. For example, a chlorine atom whose electron configuration is 2, 8, 7, loses, sorry, gains an electron to form a chloride ion whose electron configuration is 2 to 8 to 8. As shown in that equation, the chlorine atom is gaining an electron to form a chloride ion. It becomes a negative ion because the number of negative charges is now exceeding the number of positive charges. Consider a sulfur atom whose electron configuration is 2 to 8 to 6. You can see that for it to be stable, it gains two electrons. But there, what it forms is called a sulfide ion. This electron configuration is now 288, but the charge on the atom is now negative 2, as shown in that equation at the bottom. Remember, metals and hydrogen will form cations, but non-metals will form anions. Why? Because metals and hydrogen atoms do become stable by losing electrons. So they form positive ions. But non-metals do become stable by gaining electrons and they form anions. How do we write ionic equations? If you are to write an ionic equation, you need to know what purpose it serves. There are reactions which we know only take place due to the interaction of ions. So in such an equation, we may choose to show only those ions that are responsible for the reaction taking place and maybe other species that are involved and leave out other ions that do not participate. For example, when the reaction takes place between sodium hydroxide solution and dilute hydrochloric acid, the net reaction that takes place is the reaction between hydrogen ions from hydrochloric acid and hydroxyl ions from sodium hydroxide to form water molecules. So in this case, what we do is to write the ionic equation as follows. Hydrogen ions in aqueous solution combining with hydroxyl ions in aqueous solution to form liquid water. What are the steps you follow when you are writing an ionic equation? Step 1. Write the molecular equation and make sure that your equation is well balanced. Do not panic. Please take your time for every substance whose formula you write. Make sure it is correctly written. Then write a complete molecular equation and have it balanced. Step two, please rewrite that equation, but all those substances that are ionic and are in solution, therefore, are existing as separate ions. Write them as separate ions. For example, if you're writing sodium hydroxide in solution, write it as sodium ions aqueous and hydroxyl ions aqueous. Step three, 
Cross out all those ions that you see appearing on both sides of your equation. Step 4. Now, rewrite that equation that is remaining after crossing out the ions that appear on both sides. Whatever you remain with will be your ionic equation. Remember, substances that are insoluble, like insoluble solids, like zinc, copper oxide, those will be written as anionized solids. Don't break them into ions. Ionic equations continued. Let's have an example. The first example will be the reaction between sodium hydroxide solution and dilute hydrochloric acid. The products are sodium chloride and water. Remember, we said step one, write the molecular equation correctly as shown in that equation. You can see sodium hydroxide combining with hydrochloric acid to form sodium chloride and water. The equation is balanced. The substances have been written in separate colors so that you can be able to tell the difference when we come to break them into ions. Step two, rewrite the equation, but whatever is existing as ions, break it into the respective ions. You can see sodium hydroxide uh, broken into sodium ions and hydroxyl ions. Look hydro at the hydrochloric acid broken into hydrogen ions and chloride ions. Look at the sodium chloride on the side of the products, written as sodium ions and chloride ions. And then we have water. Water is a molecular substance, so we do not break into two ions. Don't forget that the charge on the atom, for example, the sodium ion, the charge depends on the valency of that element. Don't forget that. Step three, cross out those ions that are appearing on both sides, for example, the sodium ion is appearing on both sides, we are crossing it out. The chloride ion is appearing on both sides, we are crossing it out. Now whatever remains is our ionic equation. It's the hydroxyl ion reacting with the hydrogen ion to form water. Our ionic equation is ready. Let's have another example. This one is showing potassium hydroxide solution reacting with dilute sulfuric acid to produce potassium sulfate and water. Step one, you write the molecular equation, like we have said. Please check and see it is well balanced and each formula is correctly written. Step two, you rewrite the equation, but all of those substances that are existing as ions, you break them into ions like you're seeing in equation two. Now equation three, whatever ion is appearing on both sides, like the potassium ion, the sulfate ion, please cross it out. That's step three. You see that? Good. Now step four, we do write what is left of our equation. But you can see that all the substances we are left with on step four, there is a two, two, Two. So we cross out the two, and we are left with that ionic equation of ours. Okay, let's go to step three. Example three. Mm -hmm. Example two, example three. We have zinc granules are reacting with hydrochloric acid to form zinc chloride and hydrogen gas. You see? The molecular equation, the equation where the ions are broken, the equation where those that appear on both sides are crossed out, and what we are left with is our ionic equation. Now, please try out this exercise to check yourself. Number one, dilute nitric acid is reacting with sodium hydroxide solution. Don't forget, step one, you write the molecular equation. Step two, break out the ions for the ionic substances that are existing as ions. Three, you do cross out whatever ion is appearing on both sides, then present your ionic equation. In all cases, please remember 
that the charge depends on the valency. I repeat, the charge depends on the valency. For more information about this, please visit the school website. You will have more information to learn about chemistry. Thank you so much. I wish you the best.